swing it? Well, I always start it just randomly in part because it irks a good percentage of my audience. Like, hey, there's no introduction. There's no nothing. I'm like, eh, 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 so Fuck you guys. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing? I'm doing good, man. It's good to see good. you. Good. Uh, you ruined my morning. Fuck. What? What? You posted that um, that article from Medium by the Mormon lady. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. God almighty. And I was going to talk and see how you were doing and all that, but now I have to get this. I have to scratch this itch. You want to um, deal with the news? Yeah, because it's it's that paradox where um, you kind of, if you look at the abyss too long, it really starts to affect you in negative ways, and you just need like a positive bit of news or something happy to do. But this is this has ramifications uh, that a lot of our audiences should probably heed um, because it's one thing if, you know, uh, crazy New York feminist bitch, New York feminist bitches on internet says crazy shit, uh, guy in, 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 uh, Philadelphia wears blue shirt. It, it, it largely can be dismissed, but what really got me was the amount of retweets and traction, uh, and likes that that article got. Oh Yeah. There's a, there's a definite trend to hating on men and blaming us for everything, right? Well, and that's that's what scares <clears throat> the living piss out of me. And I ain't even it in the game too. no more. It should, too. Fuck. Yeah. Because you, I don't know if you pay attention to U.S. politics. We got this Kavanaugh guy trying to get on the Supreme Court. And they're going back 35 years to when you are in high school. And what you wrote in a goddamn yearbook... Uh, and that's that's assuming there's even a seed of truth to it, whereas I think it's just outright lies. Well, they will just come up with anything to ruin a guy who might make it big. Yeah. Um, I'm going to grab the link because um, we're live now and people mm -hmm. are probably wondering what the hell we're talking about. So I'm just going to share it in the uh, the public chat for them. Yeah. I mean, why, why don't you give, a, give it a synopsis of it? I mean, it's, it's well, crazy I on mean, a whole new level, but. I had to stop reading it about a third of the way through because it was chock full of so much horse shit. But uh, hang on a sec. Where's the live stream? I'll give this to these guys. Where are you? Are you chat. putting it on the actual chat? Oh, yeah. Okay. Here. You might have to authorize the post because it's I'm not. I'm not as experienced as you. Hang on. Let me put it in here. Um, oh, it's. Uh, you're going to have to authorize it because it's got a link in it. All right. Let me. Or, let me. Here, I can put it here for you. And you can copy and paste it from there into the okay. public chat. Yeah, but I mean, the summary is basically some Mormon lady living in California decided to point uh, the finger at men and blaming them for 100% of all pregnancies. Accidental pregnancy, sorry, is the language that she used. But it's like, <laughs> I don't know, what are there? Something like 30 different forms of birth control for women, and there's like two for men. Maybe three if you count pulling out. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, it's like, you know, it's, you know, we live in an era now as, as dudes where you have 100% responsibility with 0% authority. Right. And they, they, got the they got the complete opposite, 100% power benefits, but no responsibility. Yeah, with full authority. Right. And that's, that's what just, the, you, you almost wonder if she believes it herself. Oh, yeah. Or if she's just throwing meat to the, to the lions or maybe a little bit of both. But if you if you can even get through it, which I couldn't, I, I maybe got a third and I started skimming. I'm like, I can't. There are so many lies and hypocrisies and falsehoods um, and just just a complete lack of intellectual honesty on her part. There's there, it's painfully obvious there's no intellectually honest incentive on her part to advance this conversation to lessen the amount of accidental pregnancies, to lessen the amount of abortions that uh, could or should or have to be had. It is just a a rank excuse of blame men for everything. Uh, they're not, and it, it was such a childish argument, like, well, they have condoms. I mean, that's, I don't know how many, it's like five, six pages, single space font. The, the whole point is, well, men have condoms, and I don't like taking birth control because it messes with my hormones. Like, you know what's going to mess with your hormones? A kid that you can't afford or don't want. Yeah. He did a, um, he did a great response video uh, a couple of days ago. I was, I was watching it last night, actually, where you were talking about why, um, I don't know, you said like something like morons or retards shouldn't be reproducing. What was the title oh, of it? Dumbass, when dumbasses breed or something yeah, like that. that. Yeah, that was it. So when dumbasses breed... It, and I was just sitting there laughing and nodding my head in agreement because I was just thinking, okay, got to hop on a call with the captain. Got to got to get brushed <laughs> up on the sorts of things that he's all about. 
Well, after a while, the, like I said, you can't look at the abyss for too long because the stupid, I was reading through this thing and I charged them a lot because <clears throat> when I when I price out asshole consulting, normally it's length or complexity, how much of my time. But then when it's just outright stupidity, it's like, no, you're going to, for once, you're going to pay for being stupid. I know the government subsidizes stupid people. I know you guys get all the breaks in the world, but for once, for once, you're going to pay the price for being stupid. And I charge the, the gal a lot. Uh, but you look at it in disbelief where is there any thought going into this? I mean, this is a child you're bringing in uh, no. uh, to the equation. No, common and, sense isn't common anymore. No, no. And it's and it's appalling. And uh, there's always this selection bias that you had, which, which drives those of us. And I don't mean to kiss everybody's ass here, but I guarantee you we pull an IQ test on, you know, we sample everybody who's listening right now. You surround yourself with people of equal intelligence, you know, plus or minus a, a standard deviation. And so in this world that everyone's listening now and uh, our social media context and all that, most of us, we look at it and say, how, how can you, what, what is this? This is lies. This is bullshit. Did you not see the, the painfully obvious consequences of these stupid decisions? And what you got to remember is that, <laughs> no, that's just your little sphere that you're in from selection bias. And yeah, all you people have, you have reasonably uh, good logic and IQs and thought processes. That is the minority of instances in the vast majority of Western civilization today. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you've you've probably watched a few stand-up comics. Like, are, are you familiar with Joe Rogan? Oh yeah, yeah. And you know, he's got a classic line in one of his um, uh, you know specials, and he said something along the lines that dumb people are out fucking smart people, like by a, by like a ridiculous measure. And there's like it's just it's where we live, man. It's where we live. Everywhere you go, there are there are more people reproducing. It, like there's no barrier to entry. You just have to walk around, ah, trip and fall, and it's like, well, I knocked her up, ah, <laughs> knock up the next person, right? Like there's no fucking like it's just bonkers to me that you know the government gets involved in so many things, but it's like they're actually allowing the dumbest fucking people in the world to make more of the dumbest fucking people in the world, so they can get more voters to vote for their dumbest fucking policies in the world. Well, and it's it's a ratio of five to one. You can look at at birthing rates based on different women, and and you correlate it with IQ, but it's it's almost a ratio of five to one, four to one, depending on which country you want to look at. Uh, but I just get a kick out of how uh, particularly women, because men don't give birth, but they think it's like this fucking accomplishment that they had a kid. No. All, no. all you did was spread your legs and had some dumbass who you don't even know where he is half the time. Yeah. Come inside you and, and then you spat out a child, which women have been doing for the past 2 million years of human evolution, probably 3 billion if you want to go way back to when we descended from amoebas or whatever. It's the most common thing humans do aside breathing. Yeah. But there's this church and celebration and 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 uh, almost almost a religion of like oh you're a mother yeah i get this is my child it's like yeah and then then they have the child first thing they do dump it off at daycare with mom or dad mm -hmm. and that's mm -hmm. what that's what that client was gonna do exactly she's like, yeah the husband was in a different state She's in one. She makes some token bullshit amount of money with her worthless sociology degree. And she's like, well, maybe I should keep this job. And, da, 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 da. and you know, I don't really think I should outsource my children to daycare, but maybe I might have to work. Da, da, da. And you could just see, you could just see grandma and grandpa pushing that kid with a stroller with a grumpy looking smile on their yeah. face. There's, um, there's a guy that I did a request for uh, two days ago. I just, I just uploaded it and edited it. So Kind of like you have asshole consulting, you know, I do my own reach requests where people basically pay for my time and my fucking advice, you know, the cold hard truth, if you they, will. They pay for your pain and suffering and agony and the yeah. lumps you took over the course of your life. That's yeah. what they're paying for. Yeah, you know, fucking success leaves clues, but so do failures. I mean, I've got a lot of both of them. But, um, you know, this guy's fucking, you know, going on about how you should not let your wife stay home and how she should be out working because his wife went to the, you know, the stay at home mommy club and realized that her hanging out with the other stay at home mommies, you know, you become the average of the five people you spend the most time with. And if they're all going to be man bashing and man hating and men are useless and all this and that and the other thing. Yeah. Okay. At some point, maybe she's going to unplug from the marriage and go fuck somebody else. But, you know, his, you know, his theory or his advice, you know, to me, which he wanted me to pass on, which I didn't because I, because I had something to say about it was, you know, women should just go back out to work immediately sort of thing. And it's like, no, man, that's 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 not fucking good either. I mean, you know, guys, guys shouldn't be getting married, first of all. 
I don't think guys should be fucking getting married unless they understand who they are, where they're going in the fucking world, and they got solid fucking game and they control the frame of the relationship. And like 99% of guys can't do that, right? Correct. Like they're going to fuck it up royally at some point and the train wreck is going to come crashing down in massive slow motion. But it's just like, dude's just, I don't know, dude. Like you and I kind of do a lot of this. I think that you and I are, are, are probably only two. I don't even want to call it the manosphere, but that's, you know, what it is that do these requests to respond to people's questions. And I see you have a lot less patience for it than I do. Maybe it's because you've been doing it <laughs> oh, a lot it, longer. Give it time. Your patience will go yeah, away. No, yeah. You've only been at it yeah. a couple of years. <laughs> yeah. That's what I was thinking, you know, because you've been doing it a lot longer than I have. But it's like, you know, there's times where I'm like, holy fuck, I really want to rip into this guy, but he's paying me for my time. So I'm going to try to do it as nicely as possible. But see, that's, that's the selling point is... I ran out of patience and talking of failures and taking your lumps in the school of hard knocks. I don't think we have time to be nice or beat around the bush or put the kids gloves on. I certainly don't have the time or the patience. And if someone comes in with a stupid question, I beat the shit out of them. Mm -hmm. And I also think that's of benefit to them. Not only does it take less of our time and it taxes us less mentally, but it we have been so touchy feely and so, well, maybe we try, like, like I, I loathe and detest um, therapy. Psych I've never had it, but the, the approach, whenever you see it, whenever you hear about it, it's gently trying to get the fucktard to realize his <laughs> mistakes, to admit he's wrong. But since it's disproportionately populated by women and pansified men, it's, well, you know, and then, uh, and they could also be stretching it out to get more, you know, like the, the solution could be solved in a one hour session if you can be blunt and honest with the person. But if you beat around the bush, you can extend it to you drag it out. Yeah. 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 And I don't have the patience for that. <clears throat> and so I think you're doing people a favor, a favor, because there is such a lack of honesty, lump, uh, of fatherly, older brother, kick your fucking ass. What the fuck are you doing, son? Come over here. Whap. Uh, now, listen up. Here's how it works in the real world. And it saves them time. It doesn't leave any ambiguity as to what the problem and the solution is. And then it's up to their own personal resolve to go and do it. And then, then you don't have to deal with that person anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But do you, um, ahead, sorry. I'm sorry. No, no. Well, do you do Skype sessions with your clients or do you just do an email and video? Cause I, I do, I do some one-on-one -on -one Skype calls. Like I've got some coaching clients that pay me monthly and I do Skype, Skype coaching calls with them. Okay. Um, but the vast majority of, of the coaching that I do is on the phone with a, a system called clarity.fm. There's a link in my uh, channel for it, but, but they book me one-on-one. -on -one. I'm 600 bucks an hour. I should really be about five grand an hour for the shit that I <laughs> fucking give them. I mean, they're still giving, you know, they're still getting a 10,000% fucking rate of return on their money. Oh, but, easy. <clears throat> but they're, uh, yeah, they're, like they're booking my time one-on-one -on -one and the conversations go anywhere from 20 to 40 minutes. It's, it's private. So I fucking lay into them hard and I get to the point hard. Um, but I mean, the pub, like one of the public ones that I do on YouTube, because I know that they're, you know, like feelings and facts and all that sort of shit. So I try to, like get the message out as clear as possible without, you know, ruffling too many feathers. But on the one-on-ones, I'm fucking ruthless. Well, and that's that's why I was kind of curious because I loathe, I just hate talking to people. Mm -hmm. uh, not in general. I'm I'm, I'm talking the the clientele. Dumb and people so, is what you're saying though, right? Like you actually enjoy being around like a brotherhood, like your tribe. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. No, a friend of mine uh, over in Rapid uh, City, she said it best. She says, "I hate people. Uh, I hate people. I love persons." Mm -hmm. uh, and that that pretty much because there's less than one percent of the population I give a rat's ass about, but that one percent is incredibly. Vi I mean, it's the only thing that really matters in my life because I because I love these people dearly. They mean the most. They're my family. Did you ever read Jack Donovan's uh, essay? I don't care. No, no. Fucking great. Let me just okay, dig it up. Me, I'm gonna put it in your down. private chat for you. Is uh, it free or do you got to download? No, 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 it's, no, no, no. It's it's free. Uh, I don't. Actually, if you just search for I don't care, Jack Donovan, it's going to come up. I mean, it's not a long read, uh, but I mean, I've read that article. Like anytime I've been distracted in the last, um, share it in the uh, public chat because I can't oh, do it hang on, let me, let me on your channel. But anytime I've been distracted by bullshit that's like hijacked my, my day, my fucking emotional control, uh, anything, I actually go back to that. I'm like, all right, fucking, you know, back to I don't care, right? Mm -hmm. Because it because it because it resets you, I find, and it and it sets the frame of 
basically the way that we got to operate in today's landscape because it's always pounded in into us all the time. Well, you got to care about this, or you got to care about that thing, or there's this thing, or there's this right, or this justice cause, or fuck off, you know. Like you just said, it's it's my own intimate circle, it's my tribe, it's my people. Those are the things that I put emphasis on. Everybody else, go do your thing, you know, do whatever you want. Well, and I got to imagine with your schedule, unlike me, you actually have a real job during the daytime, right? Well, I've 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 basically set up my day so that I spend most of my time building out my channel, my okay. men's community. Uh, you know, I got my daughter about half the time, so you know, I share yeah, parents' kid, responsibility. Right? Yeah, um, you know, of course, living a life as well. So I don't work as much in my debt debt relief business as I used to. So I'm grateful that I've actually got the flexibility because I set it up right. I mean, I didn't fuck up that part of my life, although I fucked up a bunch of others. But yeah, it's it's um yeah, this is basically my full time job now. Right. Well, and. I'm pointing out for you, father, uh, 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 the original uh, daytime job, now part-time. This is definitely full-time. I know a lot of people see the result or the product. They don't see how the souffle or the cake was made. I mean, this is, you know, this is the the product, but then it's mm -hmm. like, oh, I got to do this. I got to, and then I got to read through that painful article about Miss Feminist New York bitch face. Um, but by the time it's done, it's a, it's more than a full-time job. And yeah, I don't have, I don't have patience. I don't care about things that don't directly affect me. Yeah. And it, when it, when it comes down that's to a it, good place to be. And when it comes down and yeah, you are right. Like, oh, there's this injustice going on in the world. This is happening. That's happening. You just cannot, like, you'll get, you'll get sad and depressed, mm -hmm. but I, I even have to force myself now. Like when the GF gets back about six or so, it's like, all right, I'm done. Now we're going to go and do, we go for a run. We go see a movie, you get cocktails, whatever. You almost have to force that that uh, fun and happiness into your life. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, I'm trying to think the amount of time I wasted in my youth worrying and caring about people, not that there's anything wrong with that, but what is wrong with that, people that you don't control and aren't going to listen to you anyway, That that's time I'm never getting back. And so now it has to be 100% rate of return, return on investment. Mm -hmm. You know, if I invest time spending time with my nieces or I invest time uh, working, I'm, I'm compensated somehow, either financially, psychologically, emotionally, romantically, one way or another, I, I'm getting a return on my investment. But the mm -hmm. charity and the kindness and kind of helping for, no, not it's it's all that's, done. It's all gone. That's, that's the biggest lie that I think society subscribes to is the whole charity, kindness, you know, like, okay, I get it. F like, don't go around hurting people and shit. But at the same time, you don't have to go out of your way, like fucking marching and like, like this, like the shit people do here. Um, you know, for example, in Toronto, we've got this uh, new premier who's conservative. Uh, you know, he was voted in. Thank God we got Ford? Really fucking was liberals. Uh, yeah, it's uh, okay, yeah. it's um, Dougie Ford's brother. Was it Doug Ford? I don't know. I thought Fuck. it was his son, and he had a brother that's also in politics. No, no, it's his younger brother. But okay. anyway, you know, he's now the premier of Ontario. We got rid of the fucking liberals. Um, and I don't know, we've got something like uh, 26 or 28 uh, representatives for different regions, and he wants to cut it down to like half or less than half. And you have these fucking retards that go down to Queen's Park, and they lie on their back, and they kick on the fucking wall like a bunch of babies having a hissy fit. These are grown-ass adults. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Lying all the way down the fucking wall, and they're kicking on it like a bunch of fucking babies. Oh, it's not fair. I don't know. We, we don't want, you know... 11, we want 26. We want to waste more taxpayers' money. And it's like, do you have a fucking job? It's the daytime. Go do something fucking productive that's going to influence your life, that of your family, you know, the people tight within you. But it's all these social justice causes now. And people get hijacked by this far too often. Far too often. Well, and one thing that I want to kind of push to get people out there, because again, we don't control those people. But it doesn't make them any less annoying or for the fact that they are trying to parasite and live off of you. Mm -hmm. um, but what I've been trying to get, I'm always, because I am I got less in front of me than I do behind me in terms of days. And unless you had particularly long longevity parents, I think, because you're, you're a little bit older than me, we're looking at our last, say, 40% of life, I'd estimate. Yeah, I'm about halfway through that. So. Yeah, yeah. And you know what? I'm not going to go through my last dwindling days of life worrying about shit that I don't control. I'm not going to let these insane people. I don't even want to call them leftists because it, it politics really doesn't define them as much as their mentality or the mental state or lack thereof defines them. I'm not going to let these people <clears throat> ruin my day, but what I am going to do is is take an enjoyment 
in the fact of you got to figure out what is their lives like. Like what, what is your day-to-day -day life? If you're going down to, what is it? City hall, not parliament, or is it the state parliament? What do you guys call it's it? It's basically the provincial parliament. So it'd be like the okay. equivalent of your state parliament state or whatever. Parliament, or whatever yeah. right? Okay. So you're going down to the provincial or state parliament and you're kicking the walls as a 37 year old man. Yeah. I mean, that's almost as dumb as knitting a pink pussy hat, spending yeah. your money and time to go down to, to Washington, D.C. to bitch and whine because you don't get free birth control. Yeah. And yeah. if you just look, I mean, think, like, what do you do after, okay, you're done banging the walls with your feet. What do you do after that? Like, you get up and uh, what's your home life like? It isn't Ward Cleaver. You're not going home to a hot wife or stable no. kids. No. You're going down to your shitty apartment. You no doubt have, well, maybe not in Canada, but you, you have some kind of debt. Your finances are not that good. You work your shitty ass barista job. And then you you stew and loathe and hate and bathe in envy and jealousy of others simply because they got a work ethic and they show yeah. up to work on time. Yeah, because they're willing to do the work. One of the things that um, happened the last couple of weeks on Twitter and uh, like for, like I signed up for Twitter when it came out, just like every other fucking moron out there. And I haven't really used it that much until the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. But like the last year that I've been using it and I, and I haven't had a lot of interaction with these feminist junkies like the lefties and all that sort of stuff. And, and I don't know what happened, but I put up a, a statement out. It was about like early September. So this is about four weeks ago. And it, it must have got picked up by somebody and they shared it on some feminist forum or discussion blog or some shit like that. I think it said something like feminist or it said something like, dear feminists, you can either have um, equality or chivalry, but you can't have both. Straightforward, right? Makes sense. Not you know. even agitating or no, no, like provocative kind of yeah, like you'd think it's you know it's pretty lame and cool you know based on some of the shit that you see out there but didn't i get one day about i don't know 300 notifications in the matter like course of a morning and i'm like what the fuck and i'm looking at it and it's like all these spazzed out like feminist social justice warriors look at you you're an mra baldy <laughs> you, do you know it's like all point and sputter and they're just pointing and sputtering at you with their bullshit and then you click on a few of their icons and it's like 45,000 tweets, 42 followers, 67,000 <laughs> tweets, 11 followers. It's like you're fucking talking to an audience and nobody, nobody cares. And all you're doing is going around hammering the shit out of people. And it's like, would I want to trade my life with your life? No fucking way. There's nothing going on in your life. Well, and that's what kind of concerns me. <clears throat> Not that they're so sad or they're in a knitting circle. The best expenditure of their time is to go bang feet on parliament. Um, but, but what I am trying to assess, and this is something that among with all the other papers of to-do list that I got here, I want to take the time to sit down and calculate and estimate just what percent of the population, um, male and female are these social justice warrior, delusional, mentally ill types. Now, I also want to figure out what percentage of the women out there actually believe this bullshit, uh, by by uh you know these articles or get upset how do you figure that out well see that's the problem that's where i gotta i gotta go and use my economic mind and come up with a methodology and sit and think it through i'm sure i gotta look at census data then you know what kind of behavior would indicate that they're like this a very simple top down is what percent of women vote democrat or labor mm -hmm. uh, um mm -hmm. that's that but that's <clears throat> too simple i mean it's a proxy but what the uh anecdotal though not empirical the bits of anecdotal evidence that keep popping up is like i said before what's really scary where you know i think i think the the most amount of retweets any one of my tweets ever had was maybe 2000 maybe 3 definitely mm -hmm. not 10 mm -hmm. and the one that uh, the article that the medium gal wrote uh, about how women have no responsibility for abortion and men, da, 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 da. that had 205,000 likes and 81,000 retweets. Mm -hmm. Using another bit of anecdotal evidence, um, when Prince Henry got married, or um, Harry, Prince Harry. Harry got married to the gal, 32, whatever. Megan, Megan Merkel, the divorce, anyway, yep. Yeah, um, and I didn't really pay attention to it, but what I did pay attention is a gal uh hashtag that are highlighted it saying look ladies uh megan whatever her name was she found her prince and you can too yeah no, and no. that got thirty thousand retweets it was it was something along the lines of you can do better ladies go divorce your husband and you can be like megan merkel as well and find a prince there's only one fucking prince that was available <laughs> 
Well, okay. It's, you know, it's like they're like, you know, convincing women out there that if you fucking leave your husband, there's going to be a, a lineup, like a, a, a penis pipeline of men lining up that are all fucking princes with their right. chariots. British royalty. Yeah, British royalty waiting to wife up their wall smashed asses. Well, and I I did the math real quick in the back of my head, and uh, there's not that many princes, not that many monarchies in the world left. Probably five available, like on the planet. Well, technically, the Saudis and the Arab countries, um, right. they have very large. So there's technically a couple thousands of princes in the world. But last I checked, there's about 3.5 billion women. Yeah. And the fact that not only a lie and a delusion, but a mathematical impossibility, a delusional mathematical impossibility is retweeted and believed by so many women. I, again, I want to know how far the rot goes. And it's not good when you got these record retweets and other statistics of social media that seem to resonate a lot with the vast majority of women. And that's what I'm kind of concerned about. Is this the vast majority of women? Do you think that there's any going back? Oh, there's going, yeah. Um, it's it's more of a philosophical equilibrium, yin yang uh, life cycle. Like uh, one of the things that MGTOWs like to go on about is the fact that uh, like the Muslim culture is essentially taking over the world. They think that it's going to rebalance things and that feminism will basically eat itself. If not that, communism. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's um, all all empires, all entities, all organisms have a life cycle. There's a, a ascension, a, a plateau, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then a collapse and a rebuild. And this is yeah. Yeah. the yeah. cycle of life played out not just in lives, both uh, animal and human, but societies, economies. You, you see it uh, all over the place. Did you ever um, see that Black Pigeon video where he talks about how women ruin societies? No problem. The paradox, I bet you have the exact same problem. You would love to just sit and binge and watch a ton of shit, but you probably don't have the time. I would love to watch mm -hmm. Black Pigeon Speaks. I'd love to watch your channel. I'd love to watch Roosh's channel. But I I honestly, um, after you do this for a while, like I binge on geek and nerd and video mm -hmm. game type of podcasts because uh, yeah. I don't want to I don't want to look well, into the abyss anymore. Once you start thinking about it, it's like, OK, because he's busy. He's basically going through all the great empires and how things fell on. They basically went upside down with the involvement of certain, you know, female monarchs. And there is a documentary on Netflix. It's called Wild Wild Country. And I saw Joe Rogan share it on his Instagram. Um, and it's basically, uh, you know, the story of Osho. Uh, Osho? I, I can't remember his, his, his real name, but he was, his, you know, he was this Indian guru guy. And he basically bought up like hundreds of acres of land somewhere. I think it was in Oregon and he moved his cult to, and it wasn't really a cult, but it was like this religious following to this part of the land. Like they had thousands of people there. It's a fucking crazy documentary. I mean, it's worth checking out if you've got Netflix, it's called wild, wild country. And then by the end of it, I realized this, you know, this woman who was in charge of basically the compound and the people fucking ruined everything. Because, you know, she started walking around like she was swinging a big dick um, and she just fucked it all up for everybody at the end of the day. Um, but, you know, like the guy ends up dying. He gets, you know, uh, you know, he gets taken in by the authorities and he's trying to flee the country and so on and so forth. But um, you start to see these scenarios play out time after time when you start to understand how things change. Right. Well, it, it, it you Back could say a, a woman. Yeah. Yeah, there, there's a woman that you know could torpedo it. Anybody can torpedo and sink a ship. Yeah. Um, and and I don't want to really necessarily point. Oh, this one woman went in and was like the virus that destroyed the matrix or something like that. Certainly happens. Um, but what is much more likely, as we see it in Western civilization, is well, ever. Yeah, go ahead. How do you how do you respond to what Merkel's doing to Europe? It's atrocious. Right. It's, it, she is and, not a statesman. She is and, not. Who's the prime the minister country. of the United Kingdom? Um, a woman as well, right? What's her name? Teresa. Yeah, right. No, the, no, th that's a, that's a like torpedo example. Society after society after society. Like, once you start being attentive to, what was that uh, chick's name? Um, she was that entrepreneur that would, like, fucking fleeced everybody. It was in the oh, meeting the last year. Thanos or th th Thermos, or she ran some kind of company, like, with a Greek yeah, name. Yeah, yeah, that one. Yeah. Well, that's different because that's an individual being promoted 
to a position of CEO. And I think she was the founder of it. When it comes to Merkel and uh, Theresa May, um, realize they are the byproduct or the symptom of women voting for socialist causes or right. socialism in general. And that's the point I wanted to get to <clears throat> about the cycle is that ever since women have gotten the right to vote, they have increasingly voted for a larger state because it benefits them financially. Their kids right. are taken care of, it lowers risk. Uh, Stefan Molino, I don't know if you've listened to him, he, he's gone into this in detail, but that, that's the short version of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The problem is that in voting for the state, uh, not only do you incentivize sloth, laziness, and non-production, uh, you replace men with the state. Now men, you know, we may criticize MGTOW all we want, but they more go galt or go ghost and they don't produce as much because why should we? I mean, as individual men, you could get by on a, on a quarter of the amount of money uh, that it takes to raise a family and support a wife. And so what I, I don't think these feminists realize because they've never taken the time to study economics, look at the federal budget, look at finances, let alone do some basic math, is uh, they are so obsessed about having the perfect life, void of real work, real toil, real labor, with unlimited rights and no responsibilities, that that is basically the perfect communist state where everything is free and you don't have to work and you just, you know, you're all diversity counselors and directors and teachers, but nobody works in the coal mines or the factories. Uh, inevitably, the economy will collapse. You'll have a Venezuela-like situation, a, a Mao Zedong type of situation. There will be starvation. The stuff will not be produced. Now, the Western world can get by with it for a little while because the United States has a world reserve currency. Also, some of the, uh, the euro is a very large currency, British pound. These countries do have economic production technology, not to mention the United States as a military uh, that will conquer all the world. Uh, so we can play this game of printing off money and borrowing money because we're pretty much the only game in town. But the day is coming where the parasites are out going to up uh, out consume what the producers can produce. And it doesn't matter how much women complain and whine and gripe and vote. There's just not going to be the production. Prices are going to go up. Shelves are going to go empty. And, you know, women, women bitch about, oh, birth control or, or my tampons cost X dollars. Well, guess what? What if there ain't no freaking tampons, period? You can bitch about the price. There's none of it because no one's producing it anymore. So this could certainly be 50 to 100 years out uh, before this reset occurs. Um, but, yeah, it, 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 that is the end. There will be an end. It could also be war, a very tragic war where we just have to, like, start uh, doing um, rationing again where women would actually have to go and build munitions mm -hmm. uh, and go into the factories and, and, and help the war effort. Um, I, as much as I'd like to think men just avoiding uh, marriage and, you know, they're proposing less, they're proposing later. Uh, but I think women, if we look at Gen X as a proxy and certainly the millennials the and, and the baby boomers, the baby boomers, they will – drink the Kool-Aid till they're dead. Um, a lot of these women will take the feminism to their grave. And once you get past menopause and you can't breed, then you got nothing else. to. You might as well commit till you're dead to an anti-male, pro-state, um, feminist world. Uh, but if you look at the millennial women now, they're, they're brainwashed and indoctrinated to be anti-male. Again, I'm concerned why these, these anti-male uh posts get such traction and retweets you look at the indoctrination and then frankly you just look at how women present them themselves physically uh half of them are obese they're tatted up they shave their head they got ear piercings they got nose piercings lord knows what else they pierce that isn't traditionally pierced uh it, it's not none of these are good indicators but inevitably they're going to test the limits of the productive capacity of the productive producers of society and when when they break that, then all hell will break loose, and then it'll be it will be might makes right. We're gonna go right when back. Do think, to, when do you think the shit's gonna hit the fan? It's impossible to tell. That's that's why I tell everyone I'm the world's greatest economist because the first thing I admit is I don't know. Um, it's it's not a matter of if but when. Um, you know what what's gonna be the catalyst or the spark that sets it off again? War. Yeah, it's actually been surprising that that we've gone this far, and you know we still keep pushing back the inevitable. Well, again, this is this is why I bring up the world's reserve currency type of stuff. Uh, Canada, you guys have done the same thing. Uh, all we, you know, I thought it was going to be the financial crisis uh, back in 2008. Um, but what we did is we just printed a ton of money. And, and I don't mean to bore people with economics too much, but 
No, no, no. Show- people need to hear the shit. Okay, well, let me, I'll explain it then in maybe a little bit more detail. <clears throat> the best way to explain it is an issue of trust, okay? And let me show you how delusional this is and why we're kind of in this magic zone where it's like, how did we get out of that? That should have crushed us. It should have, but we're the United States. You're Canada. Uh, the European Union is the European Union. Japan is Japan. And so what that means is the United States, the financial crisis started here. We made a a ton of horrible loans. We sold the mortgages overseas. That made it a global crisis, not to mention the size of the United States and the interdependency and trade and all that uh, what the rest of the world has with the United States. We sent the world into a global recession. Now, it was our fault. It was the United States' fault. Where did everybody's money flood to in the world to protect itself? Where did it go as a safe haven? Still the States. To the United States. Now, the reason why is because we are the largest economy. And if we print off a lot of money, that means you you could, in theory, come to the United States and buy our stuff. Mm -hmm. Also, there's international demand to have um, international transactions settled in a stable currency. So if you're dealing with, say, I don't know, uh, India and Venezuela, neither of those countries want the contract settled in rupees or bolivars, or bolivars, sorry. So it's like, we're going to use dollars. Well, there's this huge international demand for dollars, and then safety. Uh, so even though our finances are horrible, we're still the largest economy in the world. We're the least corrupt large economy in the world. We have the world's largest military, so we could just say, man, we're going to do it anyway. So that provides, you know, think of us as Rome. You would, you would, you know, in the olden days, you'd like to have everything settled in uh, Roman denarii or whatever the, the currency was. Sure, whatever they used, yeah, Rome. Right. So what we can do, and to a lesser extent, but not much lesser, uh, what we can do and uh, the Western civilization can do is we can print off more currency and basically bail ourselves out of any problems, financial crisis, education bubbles, um, single whoredom motherhood, illegitimate children. We just print it off. And you guys, if you look at- Well, they do the same thing in Canada, right? Right, right. It's it's a parallel, uh, not because we're very close uh, in terms of culture or our economies are so intertwined. This has been happening in Japan, Canada, uh, Euro. We've all gone from about eh, 50% debt to GDP to now we're all at about 110, 120. Well, it's debt that's never going to get paid off. So how does, right. how does uh, I mean, we're kind of moving into political uh, conversations, you know, economic sort of shit, but how does the, the state of the United States of America deal with the burden of the debt? Well, the, the debt, ideal debt situation- and the printing of money, which continues to devalue the money that we're holding in our wallets right now. Right. The way the United States, the ideal way, <clears throat> the United States or any other country, gets out of a a large debt situation is you get a booming economy so that the debt relative to GDP goes down. So it'd be no different than like, let's say you have a hundred thousand dollars in debt. Right. Uh, But I mean, the strategy to get a booming economy has always been, let's make up shit to fucking blow money on. We'll print more money. Let's build a couple of aircraft carriers. We'll build some bridges and stuff in an area that nobody lives in. We'll send mm -hmm. some money to fucking Africa to feed some people. Um, maybe we'll create some conflict in the Middle East here and fly some bombs over over people. Like, you know, the way that they that they try to bail out economy is the government prints money and then blows it on shit, but it's not really the economy bailing out the economy. It's like a band-aid solution, right? Right. And then and some economists, what you're talking about is Keynesian economics, which is like the government can just spur and create artificial demand, they'll get the economy going again. Right. More sane economists or uh, policymakers would say, no, we gotta lower taxes. We got to get rid of regulation. Um, one of the, I mean, ch- uh, until Trump came in, I have no idea why there's any corporations based in the United States because Canada had a 12 and a half percent corporate tax. We had 40%. I'm like, why is it, why is it Thunder Bay or, uh, you know, uh, Regina? Why aren't those booming financial centers? But in any case, that's, that's common sense stuff that you can do to actually get the real economy growing, put more money in people's pockets and, and boom the economy. But I mean, that like 12% and 40% number that you're talking about, like that's like that's on profits. So, mm-hmm. I mean, if you're if you're managing, a, like I own a corporation, so I understand the magic therein, right? I mean, if you're paying that 12% tax on profits that you retain in the corporation. But if you're paying a 40% tax rate, all you got to do is blow it on more shit, buy another corporate jet, you know, bonus out some money to the executives, 
you know, you can move it around and uh, hold codes. You you can, but but where that where that uh, that idea falls is a lot, if not all, large corporations, medium corporations in the United States. Um, the the corporate executives are paid with stock options or just uh, stock uh, sharing programs. And if uh, if they can lower their corporate taxes, that means more money into the the dividends and per earnings per share of the stock, and it drives the stock value up. Mm. Uh, I, I guarantee you, corporations would love it to have lower corporate taxes. Mm -hmm. uh, because here's the other thing is oh, like, yeah, okay, yeah. so corporations have more money. Well, what are they going to do with it? Well, they might invest or they'll throw it in the bank. And even if you throw it in the bank, well, now that's more money for people to go and borrow with lowers interest rates, with the, which then also spurs economic growth. I mean, again, we, we don't have to bore well, people with the- Well, the banks management. don't actually lend out money they have on deposit. You know that, right? No, there's there's the um, the reserve requirement ratio and then yeah, like they're just like they're just making up fucking loans on a spreadsheet, right? Like they're right, not, but there's it's not like you and I put a hundred grand in the bank and they're like, oh well, we've got an extra hundred thousand dollars, so we can lend it out to these people. No, now they have actually an extra million, exactly. <laughs> depending. Yeah. But again, I don't want to bore people with it. The the larger point is to get your debt situation solved is if you brought it down to an individual level, say you had $100,000 in debt and you only made $30,000 a year. Well, that's a problem. Well, if you boost your income up to $100,000 a year, well, then that that $100,000 in debt is not that big of a deal. Do you and know so why that's, that's what not governments like seriously? to do. What's that? You want to know why debt's not taken seriously by people? Like this is my wheelhouse. I've been doing this for Fuck, I don't know, 16, 17. Oh, yeah, years you're now. on you're on the front lines. I'm on the front lines, right? I mean, like I've like I've listened to to calls. I've, you know, I've I've taken calls myself, you know, I've 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 done well over 10,000 hours in this area. Mm -hmm. Uh people don't take debt seriously for the same reason they don't take fucking you know, the uh, risks of marriage seriously for the same reason guys keep making the same fucking mistakes over and over again is simply because um society and programming has led them to believe that it's okay everything's fine as long as you just you know you open up your statement and on the bottom here it says make this minimum monthly payment and you go to the fucking online banking or you push a button and you pay the 18 dollars and 72 cents and you keep carrying that three thousand dollar balance forward or whatever it is that you're carrying everything is fucking fine and that's exactly where the banks and credit card companies want people because that's where they make like 30% of the profit. They're not making the profit off people paying two, 3% interest rates on mortgages. They're not making any money off that shit. They're not making any money off the 0.4% car loans, right? That they're financing that mm -hmm. stuff like that. They're making it off the Muppets that are paying 28.8% interest on their credit card going, oh, okay, I'll just make a minimum monthly payment because it says that's okay and everything will be fine and I'll be out of debt one day. Okay, George. But like on these statements now, it actually says on the damn statement, if you just make the minimum monthly payment, it'll take you 108 years to pay this off and it'll cost you X amount of dollars. But people ignore that shit because it's far, far easier just to throw the $13 in the minimum payment and carry it forward, right? I that's would, that's a lot more comfortable. I would, I would argue not only is there that psychological barrier head in the sand and the problem will go away uh, yeah. aspect, I would also argue because, well, I got a... I, it's related. We'll do this at the end of the show. <clears throat> if you don't mind, we can we can do uh, an asshole consulting request that is exactly related to this topic. Um, people don't understand debt. They don't understand compound interest. Uh, these kids, and it's it's, it's 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 one thing if you it's don't because understand they're conditioned interest. not to. What's that? It's it's only because they're conditioned not to. They want you dumb. They want you in oh. debt because that's where they make the money. Absolutely. They just want you going out to work, earning you know what it is you earn. And then making your minimum monthly payment and carrying that balance forward, and they got you on the hook for the next fucking eighty-seven years of your life. Right, and you're not a only very good customer. You want to know who the fucking deadbeat is? It's not you or me. You and I probably fly around the world for free on our points, right? Well, I, I, I don't. I usually drive, but yeah, I mean, you know what I, I mean, right? I yeah. mean, like you collect your points, you cash them in, you get your fucking free whatever, or you fly, or you book a, a trip somewhere, and it's I fly free. Spirit all the time. So yeah, I don't yeah, really get yeah, but, but like we're the real deadbeats because the bank never makes any money off us. Oh right? yeah, it, the, the people that they love that you know are called deadbeats by the collection agencies and everybody else are their most profitable co customers. Well, to show you how bad it was. Now this is going back six, seven years ago when I last had my my real job. This is the last real job I had. I was working at a bank. Keep in mind this is post crash. You know things are coming back now. Maybe the economy wasn't booming, uh, was but that? it wasn't. What's that? When was your last job? 
I was in banking. I was vice president of commercial lending. It was, it was bullshit. How long um, ago was that? Six, seven years, 2011, 2012. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. And so um, I'm working at the small time bank in Wyoming and th these, this customer comes in. Now this cost, these customers is a, a husband, wife, couple deadbeats, always late, always overdrawn. And also magically, they had this check for six thousand odd dollars. I'm looking at this check, and it is so painfully bogus and and counterfeit. It's got an inkjet print on it, so it's really dark at the top, but then it it dries up. Then it re re injects the ink and it dries. So there's this pattern on there. There's mm -hmm. no routing number or bank account number. Wyoming is spelled wrong. I mean, this is so. <laughs> I'm calling up the cops, and my boss stops. He's like, "What are you doing?" I'm like. This is a federal offense. This is count as passing on fake checks. Well, we can't get rid of them. I'm like, why not? They're always overdrafted. That 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 is a pain in the ass babysitting these clients, and now they're now they're criminals. And he says, oh, but but we make a uh, thirty five dollars every time they overdraw on their checking account. And I looked at him. I'm like, mm -hmm. we are. This is one of our prized employees because we can nickel and dime them on overdraft fees. But and what that's true. Got, like that's what it is. Three hundred fifty million people in the states. Yeah, about that. Yeah, maybe a little shy of that. Well, if, well I mean, if you figure at least half the population's doing that, mm -hmm. they're fucking making their thirty-five dollars a month off of what fucking one hundred seventy-five thousand, one hundred seventy-five million people. Right, but here's the problem with that: is <laughs> do you know how much time, resources, and overhead it takes to babysit those retards? <laughs> It's, it's um, that's where not, not that much, not that much, because what they do is they have their call centers in India and fucking Puerto Rico where they're paying them, you know, well below minimum wage in North America to go, well, sir, did you try this? OK, well, let me check the next thing on my checklist for you. Duka, 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 right. That that's assuming you have your act together. But trust yeah. me, there are thousands of crappy medium regional and small time community banks and credit unions that don't have a town. And you spend way, I mean, you could look at their finances again, not to bore people with the world of economics, but non-interest expenses mm -hmm. are just bloated on these companies. And, and, um, cause they're cheap. They're spending a hundred dollars babysitting a $35 overdraft fee. That's, that's basically what it is. It's bonkers. Yeah. But anyway, um, the reason, uh, and I think this is, again, it pertains to how we're going to bail out the stupid, the producers have to bail out the parasites. Uh, the kids today, kids nowadays, they really don't know what debt is. No. They were never trained to know what a loan is. They de they really sign on their student loans or the car loan, whatever, their leases, and they don't know that that has to be paid back because they don't understand the concept of a loan. Well, Worse, because all they understand is the fucking concept of one easy payment. Take this pill and lose 20 pounds. Rub this cream on your face and remove 10 years of wrinkles. Do this now and get that now. We're fucking immediate gratification. Nobody wants to do the fucking work. That's right. the thing that I bang on all about on my channel is do the fucking work, right? I get mm -hmm. pissed off when people are unwilling to do. You know what they want? They want the cheat codes to life. I think that yeah. fucking, I think that Rolo nailed this, right? You know, people want the fucking cheat codes to play the video game in God mode so that they have no fucking errors along the way and they never fall down or have any mistakes or lose any money. And the girl always comes to them and she'll never leave him and blah, blah, fucking blah. Well, and you nailed it. And we, and you and I have, we've talked about this. Um, I got, I think it was the seventh time I got the question, how do I get the girls? And stereotypical, uh, uh, skinny, fat, Asian engineer, never hit the gym, dresses for shit, and thinks that there is a formula, a veritable code, and this is how the PUAs make their money. Like if you approach a girl oh, yeah. at 37 degrees and you wear your hat this way and you have your dick bulged out to the left side of the zipper, well, you know, <laughs> on a Tuesday, and if you're a quarter Jew, but no more than 45% sweet Scandinavian, you open up with a line that starts with a vowel. You know, so that's that's what they're looking for, and you are exactly yeah, right. They cheat are codes. looking for the cheat code. And so you should read it. You'd, you'd like it. Um, it's called The Authoritative, unquote, How to Get the Girls. And it basically goes through and yells at these people to say, knock it the fuck off. You just don't want to hit the gym. You don't want to diet. And you're a coward on top of it because you're afraid of getting rejected. Mm -hmm. And now whenever I get this question, which has happened two times since then, I just grab the article and I read it. Yep. And I charge them 50 bucks when normally I charge only 35. I charge them an extra 15 because I'm so sick and tired of the intellectual dishonesty. We're like, 
they're, they're, I call them the squirmers. They're always trying to squirm their way around. Like, oh, how do I make six figures with my yeah. sociology degree? You don't. Do you want to suck dick? Are you related to rich people? Are you part of in, embedded with the Democrat Party? You're not? Well, guess what? You're not going to make your 100000 So I'll there's always a, the I'll give you a really good example. Um, you had a guy that you did a asshole consulting gig for. And then he reached out to me afterwards. And then he sent me your response. And he said, I got this from Aaron. I don't know that I like his response. What do you think? <laughs> and I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? I'm like, okay, I'm going to take a stab at this. I'm going to take a stab at this. I'm like, you know what? I agree with pretty much everything that he's outlined here. Here's some additional feedback and considerations. Then he writes me back again. He wants more fucking feedback. Mm -hmm. Another video response. And I'm like, okay, I'm fucking super busy here. I typed out my response. And this fucking bitch gives me like a one star rating on my fucking response on the website. I'm like, you know what? Anytime now, whenever I see somebody go, I went to, to Cappy or I went to Rolo and I asked them that and I don't like the answer that they gave me. Can you give me a different answer? Fuck off. Yeah. I don't have time for you. Well, they, it's it's like you're asking your dad, hey, dad, can I get ice cream? He says no. Then you go to your mom. Hey, go mom, your mom, can yeah. I get yeah. what they say? Yeah, yeah. It's. And we'll see, and this is, this brings up another very interesting point uh, where my current uh, philosophy and the envelope of where Cappy's going next. Uh, have you ever thought about, now anonymously, because you and I are, are known, but have you ever thought about anonymously just going and working for the dark side and trying to write the most spectacular of lies to, to make like a buku coin, you know, come up know. with an alias and just, you what know what? What would that look like? What would that look like? Like a, like a Matthew Hussey sort of thing? Yeah, yeah, like that. Um, or I was thinking, I don't know if you know Glendon Cameron, uh, Kung no. Fu Hustle. Um, no. he's a he, he's brilliant. Um, he writes Harlequin romance novels uh, uh -huh. under a pen name. Uh, but stuff like that, you know, writing articles like the one that you sent out in Medium today from the gal from the it's all men's fault, right? But just you know, it makes you wonder. You know, Oprah made more money than you and I ever will. Yep. Unless we start lying like she did, you know, it, 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 what is what is the market value if we took the same amount of effort, work, uh, work ethic, and intelligence, and instead of like, hey, here's the truth, da da da, I know it's hard, and instead of trying to sell broccoli, what if we took our uh, talents and put it towards selling ice cream? I mean, how much ice cream could we sell? You know, how much cholesterol filled, sugar filled? chocolate syrup doused ice cream could we fill instead of trying to sell everybody broccoli and 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 uh and spinach well you'd, well, you'd sell a lot more of it because it's a lot easier to sell it tastes better right it's well, cheaper they, yeah and so people want sweet lies they don't want sour truth yeah and you know if if a guy like that you know now he's gonna f go find some therapist and this is why i don't do skype or char i charge an arm and leg for skype or, or phone because i just don't want to do it because you're running into these people who keep trying to bat around and see if there's the answer that they're looking for. Yep. And that's where therapists and psychologists and frauds uh, make most of their money because they know that guy's going to come back. He didn't hit the gym. He didn't ask out no girls. She didn't lose the weight. She didn't go and sign up for the local community programming class. And they're going to come back and rehash the exact same conversation. And the therapist is going to make his or her 200 bucks that hour. Mm -hmm. Yeah, bring them back for another eighteen more sessions. Um, yeah, uh, listen, I don't I don't disagree. And and here's the thing, you know, I mean, if you're a dude in the world today and you understand like these basic concepts, even if you understand half of the shit that we're talking about, you've got a far greater advantage than the majority of people walking the earth today right now, mm -hmm. right? I mean, most people just don't want to do the work, you know. Um, you know, there's uh, one of the things that was really interesting, and I and I got another call later on tonight, another live broadcast with a guy that's in my men's community. He's more of a political commentator. He's this Asian guy that lives in California. Um, and he did this video about why there's no animosity between Asian people and white people. Like you hear, oh, you know, white white privilege and you're racist and all this sort of shit and, and white men need to fucking, you know, bow down to make others more sort of thing. You'll never hear an Asian dude complain about uh, white supremacy, about racism or anything, because when they come to the fucking North American world from Asia, they'll do the work. They'll beat the shit out of the kids. They need to learn how to play piano and violin while simultaneously solving Chinese math problems in less than fucking 30 seconds and get A++ across the fucking board because they're willing to do the work, right? It's, it's embedded in their culture. And that's lost. Like it's a lost art in today's world is that 
people don't fucking want to do the work. They don't want to take ownership for where they are in their life. They want to point and sputter at everybody else. Well, we need to rebalance the laws to make it <laughs> fair because I'm retarded and I got to make sure that I get my share. Right. It's, it, that's, that's just where we live. It's, it's, but it's, it's, it's the shortcut they're always looking for. It's the yeah, shortcut. Cheat codes. And, cheat. and what a, a good friend of mine, Atham, he's Mexican. And his, his old man, I wish I could meet his old man. His old man is ex-military, likes firing guns, comes up to Vegas to shoot guns and visit his son. And then he goes back to Mexico. Uh, he said, lazy people work twice as hard. And it's true because if you think about it, um, Asian culture or not, if you put in the work and you get the skills and the talents, now you got the world working for you. They're throwing money at you. I got a client software engineer moving to Boulder. He's got a job offer for $125,000 because he put in the effort. Now, yeah, it took some effort up front, but think about how much effort he's now saved having to send in applications, interview with HR, uh, grovel, plead and beg for a $40,000 a year job, commute, take what you can get because you're a teacher with an education degree and there's a million other like there out. Yeah. There's only 10,000 software engineers at his level. Now mm -hmm. he's got the world working for him. And if you look at calories of energy spent, by you could say the Asian culture. I'm just saying people who work hard and put forth the effort versus those who want to bitch and whine and push their little feet up against parliament or wear pink pussy hats. Mm -hmm. uh, those people easily spend twice the calories of energy, basically panhandling and begging to parasite off of others yeah, under whatever right. false pretenses, discrimination, sexism, racism, privilege, uh, disability, whatever. Mm -hmm. They spend so much more effort and time and work over the course of their lives. And they only make about a third or a fourth what people do who took their lumps up front. Well, that's the participation trophy generation we got, right? You know, they, they get out in the real world and they're like, wow, this is hard. Uh, well, I gotta do work? They, they were sold the lie that they didn't have to work. I mean, really, yeah. look, at, look, at, look at education, uh, okay, through college. And if you're in the liberal arts, it's all about entitlement and how you, you rights. Rights are things that other people can't do to you. Like you can't steal my stuff or mm -hmm. you can't oppress my freedom of speech or you bullies. can't prevent me from, from voting. You know, what? you know what? Just reintroduce bullies. I think that bullies would solve a lot of the problems. You know, spanking your kids and, and bullies in the uh, schoolyard. It, that, would, <laughs> that would solve some of it. Um, what I what I really think needs to be done, and I don't know if this was the case up in Canada. I presume it was because we're all at once British. Um, I think that you need to own property in order to vote. Um, you, you oh, now you're getting in another conversation, right? Well, yeah. it's just yeah. it's you. You own property. It's a like that was the original way that we did it, right? Well, it was you had to be male and white and own property, and I'm not because uh -huh. that's not bureaucratic. I think you need to own property because if you own property, you've demonstrated that okay, you're somewhat responsible. That you're um, competent. You're confident. You have a vested interest in the company. You own an actual piece of it. Mm -hmm. um, Another way to do that is you must not collect a government check. You must pay taxes. That would be maybe an even easier way because you go based on social security number. Yeah, that's never going to happen because the government relies on dumb no, people no. voting for dumb programs, right? Right. Which this is this is government. la la land. This is. I think that I think that we're well past that point in no return. Oh yeah, no, no, we're going to have a, a, a communist economic collapse mm -hmm. before we get back to any kind of meritocracy or a or, civil war or a civil war. Um, yeah, e either way, we'll win. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, I mean, the liberals don't have any guns, so no, they don't. They don't. But they have the state. They will have the. They. They. You know, the day is coming. I fear where they get enough uh, people in office, and then also it's like, hey, we're going to send the RCMP or the United States military to make sure that your city council votes the way we want. Yeah, we'll uh, see about that. But we don't have to go into that. Um, say, I, I don't mean to take all your time. Would you like to do an asshole consulting request? Yeah, man, I got like half an hour left. Okay, cool. I, I don't. So I do have to get going a little bit here. Um, uh, this that guy wants to remain anonymous. I would like a video response for the following. I was on social media the other day and saw a bunch of my peers commenting on something related to student loans. They are all ready to defer or make minimum payments, waiting for it to be discharged after 25 years. I even have a friend who works in the public sector who wants to make minimum payments and have the rest forgiven eventually. I feel like the only idiot pumping as much money as I can afford towards student loans to try and get that shit over with, avoid the interest compounding as much as possible and hoping to, I think he says, and hope to start saving and living life after. Is my approach wrong? What should I do instead? In your opinion, should I not be stressing myself out about paying back student loans? My peers just don't seem to give a fuck about being in debt. 
Please not let me know how much for a response. Thanks from a young lieutenant, and he wants to remain anonymous. How much is the debt? Uh, I didn't. I I, I you didn't, didn't say. Uh, well, I, I was going to go tearing after because my advice is going to be the same regardless of the amount of debt. Yeah, uh, and he and he lives in the states, obviously, right? Right. Yeah, uh, Canada. I mean, what you guys got heavily subsidized tuition, right? I mean, it's reasonably subsidized, but I mean, in Canada, if you've been out of school for ten years, you can go bankrupt. I don't think you can go bankrupt on student loan debts in the states, right? Correct. It's 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 uh, unforgivable, non dismissible, and bankrupt. Well, I mean, honestly, like if you're living in a place where it's non -dis non dismissible, non bankrupt debt. And you've got a hundred grand of debt and you've got a, a like a bullshit degree. I, I fucking leave, man. Like just walk. <laughs> I mean, like, why would you want to live in a place where you're setting yourself up for a lifetime of, of making interest payments on something that you're never going to be able to afford paying off making coffees at a Starbucks, right? Yeah. Fucking leave. Right. But see, and there's been a lot of predominantly girls that have flown off to Europe saying I'm leaving my student loan debt. I don't know if it's just that easy. Now, if you go to say like Canada or a very American-like uh, country, of which there's not that many, but well, they can't do anything about it if you leave the country where the debt originated from. Like, what are they going to do if you move to the Ukraine or Slovenia or Germany or something like that? They can't do anything, right? Right, but Mike, Mike, uh, when when people have said that, I'm like, okay, that's fine. But have you ever tried to go and live in another country? There's other non-financial, right? I'm You've got say, to have the ability to make money there, right? You got the money to. You have to have a social network, a professional network. <clears throat> um, you got to know the language, uh, and I think a lot of these gals predominantly are going over there on mommy and daddy's dime. What do you think uh, they're doing? Do you think they're shopping for daddy warbucks or beta bucks? I, to marry? Well, this is a very interesting point you bring up. You want to talk about, hey, when does the reset happen? That's already happened there in those women's lives now, hasn't it? If you go overseas because you're avoiding some student loan debt and you got your whatever, your, your international communications degree, well, you're going to have to go work as a barista. You got to get a work visa. Uh, you got to work in these places legally. You are going to be heavily tempted now to go find Daddy Warbox and plug back into the patriarchy. I bet you their tune is a lot different once they find some rich, you know, Italian or whatever. Uh, all of a sudden, they're all, uh, maybe I'll stay at home and make the babies type of thing. Or maybe I'll stay at home and, and hmm. clean the house. I don't know, so, but like, what are the chances of a woman with like a liberal arts degree going to Italy with her pink hair, 100 pounds overweight, face piercings and 17 tats, finding a nice Italian guy to wife her up? I mean, it's pretty slim, right? Well, that's what I'm saying is they they don't think that through. They think I'll just go overseas and live there. It's like, no, there's mm -hmm. there's a lot that goes into a lot of infrastructure goes into supporting a life. Most of these people have relied either on the parents or the government to keep that life going along. So they're just as delusional. But they go overseas. You you better have your parental support. You better have some kind of skill or job. And again, it's not just like you go over there and you get a job. You, the, the 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 European Union kind of wants to make sure you have a work visa before you do that. So now you're faced with a plague, a, a, not a plague, a, um, a situation very similar to being an illegal immigrant in the United States. Yeah. yeah. Now you got to work in the black market or underground economy. And so it's what I'm saying well, is well, well, not necessarily. Like I know a couple of guys that live in Europe that that aren't citizens that were either from Canada or the states. Um, and they make a great living online. I, I mean, like these are guys, like they're not dumb. Like they, mm -hmm. like they figured out how to be location independent, create recurring passive income from work that they do, meaning like they work for one hour, but they get paid like 20 hours for the one hour work sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know that if you're leaving school with a liberal arts degree in a hundred grand of debt and going to Europe, you're gonna have any fucking success. I mean, like even if you're beautiful, um, I mean, but those two things don't go hand in hand. Like how many liberal arts, arts degree women that are attractive or, yeah, I don't know. Well, and, and even just saying that it's, it's a completely different ball of wax. I mean, the ideal situation is you get your first world income online and you go live in a second or third world country real cheap. So I, yeah. there's some expat uh, clients I've had in, you know, Southeast Asia, Bali, Thailand, and stuff like that. Uh, but they're making their money. They don't need uh, a system or an infrastructure. They've already built their own. So they're set to go. Uh, I would also argue that people who uh, abdicate the responsibility of ditching and sticking the taxpayer with a hundred thousand dollar bill also lack the maturity and work ethic to survive anywhere else. I mean, this, in other words, the environment that is most hospitable 
to these people who either don't want to pay off their student loans, are going to pay the minimum payment, kick the can down the road, and don't understand compound interest. Uh, this is the most hospitable environment they're going to find because of the roots they've already planted here. They go overseas, not going to happen. They're going to die on the vine like that. Yeah, they wouldn't know how to do it. Right. Um, as All for, they would do is walk away from the debt. Yeah, but if he can, so you either stay here in the United States and you got to pay it, or you just kick the can down the road and hope and pray a Bernie Sanders and the Democrats get elected and then vote to forgive student loans. Uh, but speaking specifically to the client's uh, question, uh, honestly, I would just pay it off. You're not doing the wrong thing because here's what I predict is going to happen. Um, even if the Democrats get their dream where they can forgive student loans, uh, that is going to be recorded on your credit report and your, your financial history. And I guarantee you, whether it's explicitly stated or not, people who are your bosses who did pay their way through college and did pay back their student loans are going to see that you didn't. And that is going to be a black mark. That's going to be a scarlet letter on anybody going forward in their lives to either get credited for uh, uh, finances, they, to get a job or anything else. On credit reports in the States? What's that? Do they list student loans on credit reports in the States? Oh yeah, oh yeah, no, all your yeah, debts. Because they don't in Canada. They don't list your your student nope. loans in Canada? Nope, 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 nope. Really? Nope. And you can't even pull a, a credit report on, on somebody that's applied for a job. Um, Really? Unless it's related to the field, unless it's related to uh, something that requires some kind of security. Like if you're a Brinks truck driver or something okay. like that, you handle money or something. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's a slightly different environment here. I mean, not that it's much fucking better, but uh, like they've basically created the condition in the state such that it's go to school, be in debt and pay off debt. for the, Like a young student is an incredibly useful customer to a bank. They, they've got, I mean, if they're in their 20s, they've got another what? I don't know, 60, 80 years of life in them where they can make interest loan payments. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. that's why you see these students leave school with, you know, a $20,000 visa that's fucking racked up to the nines, <laughs> 100 grand in debt, and they don't and have a, a newly pocket. leased car, a newly yeah. leased car. Yeah. Well, it's a nice electric car. Uh, and you know, they don't have a pot to put in or a fucking window to throw it out of, but it's like, Oh, you know, I've, I, I've done well in the world. No, you haven't, man. You suck. Like you, like you've gotten off in life in the wrong foot completely buried under a mountain of debt that you have no idea how to pay off with probably no ability to pay off either. Right. Yeah. And just to, to warn this kid or to, to kind of tell him why he shouldn't feel bad if he he mentioned compound interest. He understands how loans work. So he's one of the few, sadly, that knows what the risks are. And uh, it depends on what type of loan you got. But student loans are not a onesie, twosie percent. This isn't a car loan. They're around the six to seven percent interest rate. And that money can accrue quick. Mm -hmm. um, so, yes, uh, what he should look at the student loans as is an investment that pays six to seven percent risk free. What does it cost to go to school for one year in the States and post-secondary? It, it ranges wildly. Now, thankfully, there's some community colleges and online colleges where you could go for like 3000 a year, mm -hmm. especially if you have in-state tuition. What about uh, if you're doing like a useful degree, like something that's a professional, uh, like a lawyer or doctor or something like that? Well, lawyers aren't worth anything here in the United sure, States. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So let's say but, doctor. Well, then, then there's a smart way to do it. Uh, your first two years, you should be going to community college or online just to get your prereqs out of the way. Because the first two years of college is taking these bullshit classes, the prereqs, Marxist indoctrination. They have nothing to do with your degree. Then you either go online at an accredited institution. Of, now, most of those are going to be your accounting and IT, computer science type of disciplines because those can be taught online. If you're going to go engineering, well, then you have to go to a physical four-year institution because of lab work and the physical equipment that's required. But you could still... Find reasonably affordable tuition. I'd say, again, depends on where you're going. MIT, I'm sure, is you know up there. Uh, but you should be able to find it for like about $10,000 a year. And then you could have scholarships and other things like that. So if you do it right and you don't have to go to the party school where all the action is and you're just, I want an accredited degree, I'm willing to take classes online or go through community college, you could get through college at about 20 to 25 grand in the United States. Okay. So on the low end, but on the high end, I mean, you're talking 50, 75, 100 grand. A year. A year. Yeah. Yeah. yeah like and you're getting into some like lifetime sort of shit. And then at the end of the day, you've got an engine engineering degree that might 
you know, land you a job somewhere like a Boeing or a fucking Airbus or a military contract and you might get paid what? Like, what does that pay? 100, 150, 250? If, if, no, not 200. No, no. You're lucky. Uh, engineering salaries are starting in the high 50s, low 60s. If you're, in a, if you're in a particularly <clears throat> in-demand field, you can make 100, but that's that's more your IT computer geniuses. See, at the end of the day, guys, job stands for just over broke. And like I'm with Cappy when it comes to just doing these like worthless degrees. But at the end of the day, I don't think people should let school get in the way of their education. You can learn a hell like you could take twenty thousand fucking dollars that you're going to spend in one year in a, in, a, in a degree, whether it's worthless or not, you know, STEM versus liberal arts. Take that. You've got a great business idea that you think has traction and throw the 20 grand at that. I Guarantee you you'll learn a hell of a lot more doing that than you will sitting in a classroom with a bunch of other Muppets writing down shit. And if the business takes off in the one out of 10 times, you you know, you knock it out of the park. Great. But probably nine out of 10 times you're not. You're going to fall flat on your face, fuck up, lose a whole bunch of money. People are going to point and sputter at you and say, see, I told you to go to school and get a job. You know what? Try it a fucking again. Because if you're because if you're because if you're relentless enough and you don't even have to be smart to be successful as a guy that's self-employed, I mean, I'm not going to, you know, point and cap and say he's a fucking idiot. He's a smart guy, but I think he himself would say he's not the smartest guy on the planet, right? Me oh, neither. But I know plenty that plenty of failures behind on my track yeah, record as well. Yeah. Plenty of failures. But I know that if you're relentless at what you do and you really fucking apply yourself to it and you take ownership to it, there's a chance you're going to get it off the ground. I'm still firm on, on 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 don't go to school, don't don't go for the job thing, don't go for the gold Rolex watch at fucking, you know, uh you know, your pension retirement party or whatever, because those because those days are long gone. We live in a world now where you can create your own income, working from home, working remotely, uh, you know, not location dependent. You can create recurring revenue if you've got a great product or something that you sell. I mean, go out and do it. Go out and take a stab at fucking life and stick your neck out on the line and take some fucking risks instead of and it's not even playing it safe. You know, going to school for a dumb degree to take a dumb job. Oh. That's not even playing it safe. That's that's pretty high risk. And then you're gonna walk through. Oh, duh, duh, duh. now it's time to get married. And oh, okay, yes, the dear. First part. And then you know, three years later, or six years, or seven years later, she's fucking Chad Thundercock, the pool boy. And you know, you're like living in your parents' basement, still with student loan debt, working with your engineering job, with your pocket protector and your leased Honda Accord, and you're fucking throwing all your money to her, right? So it's like, wake up. That's all I'm trying to say is wake up. Well, and this is, I always recommend the two prong approach. Um, and this is, it's going to take effort and work. And I'm not against you going and getting a degree in engineering. I'm not against you going and getting experience in the industry. A lot of people say, what should I do as a business? I'm like, fuck, if I'm telling you, you could, I, <laughs> if I got an idea and it makes money, I'm not telling you. I'll sell you the business at a net present value. But That's I'm not my gonna, favorite. That's you know, my favorite. What do you think of this business idea? How do you find your passion and create a business? It's like you're looking for the cheat codes again. Yep, yep. So what I tell people is, look, as an insurance policy, get an education in a good field. Doesn't have to be a four-year degree. It could be a trade or something else. Go get some experience. While you're doing that, you run a side gig. There's there's two mandatory part-time jobs. One is going to the gym, which sucks. Yep. And the second is running your side game. Doesn't have to be big. Uh, doesn't have to be grandiose. But just to plant some seeds that hopefully will grow, provide some income, multiple seeds. And then one of them, I mean, no guarantees, but inevitably you put the effort into it. You water these seeds. One of them is going to take off. And I'm then gonna... all of a sudden you're faced with the with the enviable position of like, yeah. oh, I don't have to work my daytime gig because I'm making money, you know, whatever. The programming thing, the app I program, the accountancy I set up. Um but you're not going to have that option if you do your nine to five, yes, dear, uh, uh, three bedroom, four bathroom house lease, and then and then you don't have any time to pursue that entrepreneurship idea. How many how many different sources of income do you have, Aaron, based on your books, uh, your consulting, your YouTube channel? Like, what would you say that it adds up to? Uh, it only adds up to thirty five thousand, as far as anybody knows. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, yeah, but but like as far as your different sources of monthly income, because I'm because I'm just looking at mine based on what I do with uh, content creation, and mm -hmm. it's at least a dozen. Wow. Oh, with kind of yeah. Okay, if we divide, um, I got rental income, got book sales, and well, I'm going to include Kindle and all that other stuff. I'm just talking specifically about creating content, talking to men, oh, you know, helping content? them becoming better version of themselves. I've got at least a dozen that I'm looking at here on my 
on my monthly tracking. And by the way, guys, if you're not tracking your fucking monthlies, start it. Like it's not fucking hard to do. Like any moron can open up an Excel spreadsheet and start filling out columns and tracking it monthly. You almost uh, have to do Excel because Google keeps fucking with the analytics. It's like, God dang it, yeah. it changed it again. I'm like, ah, oh, right, right, right. But I mean, like, I mean, the point being, like, this one, this one conversation that we're doing right now has potential opportunities for at least a dozen different sources of income for each of us to, you know, either find new customers, a, a an opportunity to grow the audience, to spread a message, sell them something at some point down the road that might be of some use to them. It's not just one fucking thing. Like you got to throw it in different pots, right? Mm -hmm. Now I added up, I had, I have seven. I used to have uh, uh, eight, uh, but, uh, and this here's, here's a perfect example why you have multiple sources of income. My eighth source of income, I used to teach these online classes. Um, they said, well, we want to buy you out of your contract. We'll still pay you a stipend. And they bought me out of the contract. I still, and then all of a sudden, sure enough, Oh, well, we found out you have this asshole consulting thing. We had some complaints to the students. I'm like, bye. Yeah. Bye. Fuck Don't you. See ya. See ya. Yep. And that's the thing, guys. Uh, that is that is the you know it's not even having fuck you money, but it's basically a fuck you life. Mm -hmm. It gives us the opportunity to say no, thank you. Oh, we've had complaints about your YouTube channel. Like, if I ever had a customer that is part of my debt relief business come to me or email me and say, "I saw your YouTube channel, or somebody sent me a video about this and the <laughs> other thing, and I don't agree with it," it's fine. Fuck off. Like, you know. Here, let me show you some. I'll take the cover off. It's my dick. Suck it. Fuck you. That's it. <laughs> Well, listen, I got to end it because I do have to get going. Uh, Rich, thank you so much for coming on. I apologize that we didn't do the, the divorce thing. I thought you just wanted to shoot the shit. And that's what we did. No, that's cool, uh, man. No, we just but, shot the shit for a bit. But just for everybody to know, uh, it's my dream, and I'm, I'm sure we won't get any rejects. Uh, I want to have Rich, Mark Bovary. No, Mark Bovary. Uh, I've heard the name. Okay. Uh, Glendon Cameron and Terrence Pop on because all you guys have been divorced. And especially since we teach to a younger audience. Uh, the, a lot of people never went through divorce. We don't know. A lot of us never been married, including myself. And I had these questions and and because I see my own man get divorced about 16, 17 times. And I, I, I watched the movie but and all the sequels, but I didn't know exactly like, okay, how did this happen? Why is this happening? I think <clears throat> you guys going through it can not only shed some light on it, but provide a lot of vital information and insights and explanations about divorce, women, the judicial system, both Canadian and American, and by the states or provinces, I, I think it would be a great conversation. But that will that will be down the road. Uh, yeah, set it up. I'm I'm all over that like a fat kid on cake. Um, cool, totally, totally all over it. Uh, can I just plug my channel real? real Absolutely, quick? please do. Entrepreneurs and cars, guys. If you like the shit that we're uh, rapping on about, have a look at my channel. There's some good videos there. Oh, before we go, how's that book coming along? It's not. I put it on hold. <laughs> I've actually, I've actually spent the last two weeks working on my talk for the twenty one convention, and I'm gonna okay. fucking kill that. But basically, my 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 book when it's done is gonna be lessons that your dad never taught you. So I get called, you know, the father that I ever had from time to time on my channel. I know that Aaron's more of like the older brother, mm -hmm. um, but I'm but I'm gonna distill the best lessons that um, I've got in that book when it's done. So that'll be up next year. I'll tell you right now, you know what? You just gotta go become a hermit for like three weeks and bang that sucker out. That's what I'm, I'm just gonna rent a cabin in the woods with some yep. electricity, bring my laptop and just hammer it out. That's what you gotta do. So, all right, thanks, Rich. We'll talk to you later. All right, dude. Ciao.